Okay, now let's switch topics, and finally, let's talk about photos. Photography can be a very rewarding experience. Um, I know for me, it captures the most important moments of my life. I remember when I was on the beach and I asked my kids to stand together to take a picture. I didn't know my son was going to wrap his arms around my daughter. I didn't know my daughter was going to reach up and hold his hand. But for the rest of my life, I'm going to picture them like this. Despite the fact that he's now taller than me, that's how I imagine it. I'm not alone. You too have amazing images that are the most important, precious uh, memories of your life. But if we're honest with each other, we'll also admit that photography is very labor intensive. It takes a lot of time to organize, edit, enhance, upload, and share your photos. Time that many of us don't have. At Google, we think we can give you some of your time back. By combining your camera with our cloud, we can do some of those labor-intensive tasks automatically for you. In fact, today, we'd like to introduce the notion of Google, Google's data centers, being your new darkroom. Now, what does that mean? Well, when you think of the cloud, most of us think new areas uh, that combine the data center Google's cloud with photography. But before I do that, let me just begin with what you already know, backup. Now, since we've launched Google+, we've always backed up your photos. Uh, unlimited, all your photos at standard size. And a few months ago, we introduced the ability for you to choose an option where we would upload your photos, not at standard size, but at full resolution. And we offered five gigabytes free. This week, we announced that we're going from five gigabytes to 15 gigabytes free. Now, why does full, full resolution matter? Well, what you're looking at here is an 8 megapixel uh, shot. 8 megapixel shot, you know, you can clap if you want. Go ahead. <laughs> I love it when you clap, and I haven't even made the point on the slide. It's great. But I think you get it. You know, uh, 8 megapixels is pretty common. Some cell phones, like the uh, Galaxy S4, go up to 13 megapixels. And when you have an important image, you don't want 619 pixels, or 1024, or 2048. You want all the pixels, because some memories are not meant to be downsized. And we give you that ability on Google+. Let's move on. Now let's talk about highlight. What you're looking at is 686 of my vacation photos from my trip to New Zealand. Now, there's some beautiful images in there, images I want to share, but I don't have time to pick them out because my vacation is over, okay? <laughs> now, I suspect you've been in the same boat, you know? You, it takes time to do all this stuff. Um, Google can pick the best pictures for you. We can go from these 686 pictures to these. It's remarkably accurate. Now, go ahead, you can clap. <laughs> Some of you must be saying, how did Google know those were the best? Let me tell you. We do lots of things to choose the best. Some of the things that we do is we look for images that are blurry, and they're not going to make the highlights. We look for images that are duplicates. I took four images of the same mountain. We'll pick one. We look for images that are not the greatest exposure, and they're unlikely to make your highlights. Or we even do amazing things, like we recognize the Eiffel Tower. We can recognize in your images if you're at an important landmark. In this case, this is a beautiful shot of Queenstown. And we boost that image so that it's more likely to make the highlights. We also analyze to see if there are people there. Are the people happy? Are they smiling? <laughs> Might make the highlights. Our machine learning algorithms have also been uh, trained by literally hundreds of human raters. So that the machine learning algorithms have now begun to account for aesthetics, for human taste. What do people find beautiful? and we're able to boost that image. And then my favorite is affinity. Uh, we recognize uh, who's important to you, who's in your family circle, and we apply appropriate social boosts so that your wife and your children are in the highlights. It's absolutely amazing. We think you're going to love it, uh, and it's gonna save you time.
This is a shot of what we're rolling out this evening. This is the actual product, the desktop version. You'll note that we'll give you your highlights, and right there at the bottom, you can always click and see all the other images as well. Um, so it's, it's right there for you. Now let's talk about um, enhancing your images. One of my favorite photographers famously said, you don't take a photograph, you make it. And if you know a good photographer, a professional, you know that's true. Professionals can take a good image and make it amazing because they have access to tools like this. Powerful tools that require lots of skills, that run on expensive machines, that take lots of time, and you can do amazing things. The problem is, is that for the average person, these tools often look like this to them, like a bewildering set of knobs that they don't understand. Today, we're introducing Auto Enhance. Auto Enhance is an easy button to make your memories look beautiful. We can automatically take an image that looks like this and make it look like this. Now, how in the world do we do that? Well, we're going we're to show you some of the things that we do. Uh, things like tonal distribution, skin softening, noise reduction, structure, vignetting, red eye reduction, so much that we do. And we don't have time in this keynote to show you all of them, but we're going to highlight a few. Let's begin with tonal distribution. All of us have taken pictures that are over or underexposed. You might think Google would find the middle ground. We do better than that. Remember, our algorithms take into account human taste. So we can take an image like this and just make it perfect. Let me show you another example. Let me show you another example. Let's talk about skin softening. Now, I'm going to apologize in advance because you're going to see a huge photo of me. But we thought we'd pick someone that no one could get offended over. So we'll, we'll start that with me. OK. Now, let's talk about recognizing people's faces. If you have an inexpensive phone or um, a, 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 even an inexpensive camera, those devices can recognize faces. But the state of the art today is to put a rectangle around a face and say, we think there's a face there. We've had several breakthroughs at Google where we're now able to deeply recognize the human face and skin. We can tease apart exactly where is the hairline. What are the eyes, the teeth? Is the person wearing jewelry? Do they have glasses on? And we can separate all that out. That breakthrough means that when we do the other effects, things like structure, uh, uh, the tonal enhancement, why we can do something different on the clouds, the water, the mountains, and we can treat the human face completely separately, like a professional would in a tool. Now, let's talk about one of those effects. Let's talk about skin softening. Now, how many of you like your passport or your driver's license photos? No one does. Well, 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 why not? Because photographs often exaggerate our flaws. In real life, when you look at me or your friends, you don't see every one of their flaws. But in a picture, you see all of them. In fact, we're going to make it worse. Let's zoom in on this picture a little bit. <laughs> like I said, I, I use my own so I wouldn't offend anyone else. Um, wrinkles, right? But chances are, when you're talking to me, you don't stare at them. Watch what happens when we apply skin softening. Just gently tone down. Let's zoom all the way out. That's the original image. That's with skin softening enhancements. Just gently and beautifully enhanced. We think you're going to love it when we apply this across your photographs. Let's talk about noise reduction. Um, maybe you've taken a picture in low light, uh, particularly with a, with a cell phone. You get grain, noise on your image. Look at the sky in this photograph. Well, our noise reduction filters can automatically take something that looks like this and make it look like that. Pretty amazing. Let's talk about structure. Here's a picture uh, that I took uh, when I was in New Zealand. I remember that image having more life. It was more vivid. Well, what happened? Well, the camera palette balanced everything out, so it became flat. A professional would go as lat. A professional would go into a tool, and they would add a lot more structure to the sky. Uh, we can do that automatically. And so we can take an image that looks like this and auto-enhance it to look like that. OK? There's obviously lots more uh, that we don't have time to talk about. But we, we're, we are going to bring up a special tool, a debugging tool. And we're going to tease apart some of these effects and show you how they layer on to make an image awesome. So here's an image, um, untouched, uh, out of the camera. And we're going to start layering on these enhancements. Let's begin with tonal enhancement. Okay? 
let's add some skin softening. Before and after on the skin softening. Now let's add some structure for the clouds. Let's add a vignette to emphasize the human face. And let's go before and then auto-enhanced by Google. Pretty amazing, isn't it? One, one more example. A beautiful landsca uh, landscape photograph of Queenstown that I took. I think it's pretty great. Let's see what Google can do. Once again, tonal enhancement. Uh, doesn't need any skin softening here. Structure, a uh, little bit ar around the edges, darken the edges. Look at the original and know what Google did. Amazing. All you have to do is all you have to do is upload your images, and we will apply all of this for you uh, on all of your photographs while still giving you control. This is an actual picture or an, uh, an actual shot of the product itself that's rolling out this, this afternoon. If you mouse over any photograph that's yours, why well, we'll show you that enhanced icon. And when Matt clicks on that enhanced icon, we'll go back to the original, and if you let go, you'll see the enhancement. And if you want, you can click under the More menu, and you can always turn this on or off, either globally or on an individual photograph. Um, so we think this is amazing, and it's going to save you lots of time. Let's continue on. We've talked about backup. We've talked about enhancing, uh, highlighting your photos and uh, enhancing your photos. Now let's talk about Awesome. Auto Awesome creates a new image from one that did not exist. Um, let, me give you, let me give you an example. We have lots of these. Let me give you an example. We recognize that you've taken several pictures uh, in burst mode or taken around the same time together. We will automatically gift to you in your album something that looks like this. Here's another example. Maybe you've taken lots of shots of children that are never looking at the same time. Go back to your album. You'll see a gift for you. You'll have another one of these auto awesome motions. By the way, over the past two weeks, in a dark launch state, we've gone through all the albums you've hosted on Google and gifted all of these to you. You'll see them turned on this afternoon. Um, these are five. We're introducing five auto awesome effects today. You saw a demonstration of motion. Let me briefly talk about the others. If we recognize that you have multiple portraits together of people, we will automatically create a collage. HDR is self-explanatory. We'll do that for you. If we see multiple pictures of the same people uh, in burst mode where they're not all smiling, we will find where they're smiling and we will construct a new image with all of them smiling. It's amazing. And and finally, a, a pano. So if you've taken uh, an image, we recognize it's at the same spot. We'll stitch them together beautifully and put that in your album for free.